Hello, everybody. Welcome back to some Descent into Avernus. Uh, I am Sigour Hellholm, your Dungeon Master, and our players below are, most of them, are here and ready to go as normal. How y'all doing? Everyone good? Doing good? Yeah. We're good. We are... Ready to do it. Finally. Yeah. Finally in Avernus. Now, you guys kind of got the, the brunt of what it felt like, just, just very brief, very quick, because immediately stuff started happening. So you haven't even really had a chance to look around and be like, whoa, <laughs> holy shit, what is this? Seems uh, like hell. Because sur survival... We just uh, hit the ground running. Is, yeah, survival <laughs> comes first. Survival comes first. So uh, let's talk about that a little bit. Um, oh, also, before you get into that recap stuff, Stab is not here tonight. Unfortunately, he's on some business trip. Business and... But uh, he might pop in the chat here and there and, and say, hey, so I'm going to keep an eye out for him. I'm going to do my best to do what he does like I normally do. That being said, mm -hmm. who wants to talk about what went down last time? Ooh. I feel like not a whole heap of a lot, like, like in terms of like the exposition that we have gotten over the last mm -hmm. two games. But uh, we we did uh, this past session fly out uh, via Griffins, uh, yeah, from Candle Keep, and uh, met up with what was it, so one of Sylvia's homies. What what was he? What did he look like? Was he the one that looked? Was he like an otter? That's right. He was a little, little wizard he was, otter. He was, he was a little, he was a little otter person, and it was, it was so cute and adorable. Um, I like how I, no one I, to that at all. Like, yeah, just yeah. One of yeah, by this point, <laughs> we're like, we've seen demons, we've seen little impish minions, and 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 all sorts of crazies. This is otter person. Ah, this is nothing. This is Tuesday, <laughs> Tuesday. That's what it is. Uh, but no, uh, the little, little otter person, they, uh, they hooked us up with a one-way ticket into Avernus, and the second that we got there... Wait, 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 before you got oh, there, wait, yes. you met someone mm -hmm. else in that tower who decided to join you, right? Oh, yes! How could I forget? The little, <laughs> little wee... Yeah, that, that, I don't know, you know, the sad thing is, is, uh, for as cute as that little... Uh, some bitch was. Um, I do not remember their name. <laughs> it's a little, it's a little Lulu. The Lulu. 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 The okay. Tiny well, elephant. You know what? Lulu. Little. You know what? That Lulu the elephant. Of course. That. How? How could? How? Da how? How dare I? Uh, <laughs> little Lulu the elephant, who probably alerted everyone to our presence. Uh, in in the middle of the fight with their uh very loud thunderous trumpeting trunk of whatever um but uh they, they were definitely handy to fight uh they were ride or die and uh we appreciate that we appreciate their contribution to the uh, uh to the you know, to the squad and then yeah we 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 wind up uh stumbling across uh, a woman and uh what appears to be her children and uh, come to find out, these are people uh, who were present at the time that uh, El Terrell just kind of uh, <laughs> got yeeted. And it just got, got, got yeeted. It got just straight, <laughs> like, like, just gone. <laughs> uh, and and uh, we, we, we meet the, these people, but not before they are being waylaid uh, by the denizens of Avernus. And uh, we laid the smacketh down on all of their candy asses, and um, we saved the day. Uh, only to discover, once again, this woman and her 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 children are uh, of El Terrell. That uh, we we are we are basically uh, like the time has been distorted. That the passage of time is not the same. Uh, as uh, what it was for us, so for her, it's not been as long as what it has been in actual history. Um, and then we were also, we were, uh, right before we ended, we were beset upon by, uh, what were they? Were they like ghouls or some kind of... They look like I don't ghouls. know, there was something. Yeah, like, like some kind of, some kind of ghoulish creatures. And, uh... 
we were determining whether or not we should whip their candy ass too or run for the hills so uh yeah that that, that was uh that that is what happened that is exactly That's where what happened last time on dragon ball z <laughs> that is exactly where we left off last time you can have inspiration for the evening sir make sure to use it you only got it for tonight um <laughs> Just to double down on what Mr. Elgin just said, so the group is currently in Avernus. They got teleported to El Terrell that's still intact. And uh, currently, just just as far as they know, because they haven't even had a chance to truly look around, just kind of in Avernus somewhere, somehow. And they're going to surely deal with that eventually. But right now, they got to figure out how to, how to survive their current predicament. And just to show the overall scope... They're here to, if it wasn't clear enough, try and save El Terrell as best they can. Yes. Okay. That being said, everyone ready to jump in? Let's go. What is that, be? Okay, let's go ahead and transition over to our game screen here. So, yeah, this is one of those sessions where uh, where we ended was the moment combat was about to pick right up. So if, uh, you know, we... Oh, I should have preloaded this page. This might take a... <laughs> take a moment here let's test it out well, you up. got that big boy internet now dude you good I, I do but i added uh you, you guys will see i added a few bonuses to the map since y'all last saw it oh wait, bonuses you, better you, not mean ghouls <laughs> animations <laughs> it doesn't mean ghouls it doesn't mean ghouls it should be preloading on your screens right now it's done yeah it's done. It done for uh, everybody yeah for me yeah uh no i still gotta pause i got game pause that's all you see, yeah, though? Load, that, that's good. The, yeah, the I see part. the, yeah, I see, like, the, the yeah, our, yeah, our little splash page. That's that's it. Perfect. It loaded, because like, in, in the preload finished? I think it did finish, because y'all should be all right yeah. here on our battle map now. Oh, never mind. Here it is. It took a minute. Oh, uh, there's fire. There, oh, Lord. Smoke. Lord, Lord have mercy. <laughs> I woke up, and Jesus, there was a fire. <laughs> oh, Everyone... Jesus. Click your tokens, put them in <laughs> combat, and let's roll some initiative, please. Let's go. Let's see, you're in combat, you're in combat. Gotta go through all my ghouls here. You and you and you. Do we have enough ghouls? Y'all want like two or three more? Is this good? Uh, I, yeah, you know, I, I, I think we're good. I think we're good. All right, here comes some initiatives. Jesus. Here we go. Oh, looks like y'all, y'all got the luck of the draw here. So, we are going into some combat. Let's get some better music for this here. Uh, Doya, I believe that you are up first, buddy. All right, you've been set upon by a load of ghouls breaking out of these buildings. Uh, one came out of a doorway on the right side over here and actually slipped on an ice puddle, so he's prone, laying on the ground, the, the one near the ping there. Um, I could smell them <laughs> coming. Most of them look <laughs> like they're, they're almost not wearing anything. They have, like, scraps of leather and cloth on their bodies. Uh, you do notice one in the back, particularly this one, however, looks to be wearing, almost looks like an adventurer himself, uh, wearing leathers and whatnot with a pouch on his side. What would you like to do? do I'm gonna roll up. initiative for stab. Oh, that's right, stab. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Stab we, is here. We need, we need stabby stab. He might be up first. Hold up, let's take a look here. Look at that, three of y'all on top. All right. What? What you got, Doya? Uh, you're gonna have to unpause. Oh, you know what? Yeah, yeah. we have got that covered, buddy. There you go. I mean, when Five, you put it 10, that way. 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. How fast does this thing move? I gotta double check that. You dire wolf? Yeah, it's pretty far. 50, yeah, you, so I'm good. Should have good good movement speed on that thing. I'm going bite. <laughs> yeah, I, got, I, beat, I beat him. Okay, that is definitely gonna hit this guy as you bite into this ghoul. Uh, for eight piercing damage, and I believe it means he's like strength sa uh, savings throw. Or you're gonna rip it to the ground, right? You see 13. All right, let's see. That is a uh -huh, uh -huh. moose. Remind me if they tie it to success. That's correct. Okay, it barely succeeds. 
So uh, as you're trying to pull him to the ground, he just kind of spins his body around instead of like resisting you, just moves with your motion and stays standing. These things seem pretty agile. Ooh. Keep at it though. This looks like a new chew toy. <laughs> oh no. Okay, so you did some decent damage to this guy. Is that the end of your turn? Uh, you know what? I'm actually going to use a bonus action. Now that you mention it, I'm going to burn a spell slot of level one for 1d8 health. Okay, you uh, use some of your magics to close up some of these wounds that have formed on your wolf form and uh, recover just a little bit of health, uh, expecting likely an onslaught. All right, now I'm assuming oh. that's the end of your turn, which will take us to Elgin. Yes. You're up, buddy. Oh, I um, add one more to combat list here. here let's see. Oh, man. Doya is over here hurting, hurting. Well, well keep, in you mind, what. Keep, keep in mind, mm -hmm. Wolf Doya, when he loses all of his HP, it goes back yep. to his normal body, and his health is essentially full. Oh, never mind. He's straight then. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, he good. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm oh, good. I'm at like <laughs> 60 health. Yeah. He's like, oh, okay. Oh, well, well, then hell. Well, uh, well, then he's got this. Um, I see these people though that look like they're gonna try to run up on the, our our newfound friends. I see it was Ray is kind of already uh, you know, kind of boxing them in to protect them. Um. I think what I want to do is, since Doy is holding the, uh, the the eastern front, I'm going to come up here. Uh, yeah, 5, 10, 15, or actually, no, I'm going to get about right here. That's about as far as I can go. Uh, um, and we are going to use this belly spell. We're going to... We're going to do a little sacred, sacred flame. Okay. flame. So, um, we're going to be bringing some, uh, I think this is a uh, radiant damage, uh, coming down on them. I think they got to make a DC 16. Dexterity save. Uh, dexterity save. Let's see this, if they, they make it this, this one, time. right? Yeah, this one. Yeah, right there. That, that little grubby looking one right there. Okay. It makes its saving throw and succeeds. You... Is this I'm light beaming from the sky onto this <laughs> ghoul? It just... It's, it sees it coming, and it just kind of goes on all fours and shoves itself out of the way. These things seem very quick. Mm. Intelligent. Mm. Okay. Well, then. That's all I got. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's going to bring us to Stab, who is going to... Let's see what he's going to do. Let's make Stab be a bit of a hero here. He's going to run in 5, 10, 15, uh, 20. Now he'll move through Ray to go 25, 30. And he is going to pull out his rapier and take the dodge action, trying to protect this family. And that's going to end his turn, uh, which will bring us to some bad guys. Specifically, the bad guy right next to you, Doya. Uh, it is going to retaliate after you bit onto him. He is going to... Let's see what he can do. I believe he is going to try and bite you. As you bit him, he lashes towards your body with his mouth wide open with these sharp fangs and goes to clamp down. That which, was it. Which sinks <laughs> into the side of one of your... Woof flanks, wolf haunches, your upper wolf shoulder, as it deals eight piercing damage. Okay. Uh, that's all that ghoul can do, so we're going to keep on moving here. Uh, Rhea's up next. Uh, Rhea is going to hold her action for the first thing that gets it within range, and she is going to swing at the first enemy that gets within range. And uh, she will stop right there. Next will bring us to our ghoul that's currently on his back as he slipped on some ice, this guy right here. He turns his body over and stands, which I believe that's, remind me again, Moose, half movement or all movement to stand? I believe it's half, yeah? Half. Half. Mm -hmm. He stands up and rushes towards Stab, just stumbling as he goes. 
and slashes with a claw. He gets disadvantage, claw. fortunately, because Stab oh, okay. is taking the dodge action. <laughs> Perfect. So, Stab. <laughs> All right. Because Stab's dodging, this thing comes in. These claws are just lined right up with his face. Stab holds his rapier and catches it between this thing's claws and is able to throw it to the side and not get his face cut up. And that will take us to little Lulu here. Lulu is going to fly around Harkina here up to this ghoul and uh, just try to try to get him with some tusks. See if she can <laughs> get him. Tusks. Uh, what is this dude's AC? Okay, yep, he's this 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 a little slower ghoul than the rest. He's gonna definitely be hit here. And he will take one tusk damage. <laughs> we'll put him at here we go. And that's all Lulu's gonna be doing for now. Uh, next up will be another ghoul. And then uh, when I have a bunch up at the same time, I'm gonna have them all to perform, but it's still just one at a time. Uh, one of the ghouls in the back. Starts rushing forward. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Right up to you, Elgin. Mm. And he is just, he is on all fours just sprinting at you. And when he gets towards you, he lunges at you with his maw wide open as he tries to bite you. You see this thing just bull rushing at you. You hold fast with your shield up as best you can. And it slams right into you, almost knocking you back, but you hold your ground. <laughs> Hayes, you're up. Okay. Um, seeing all of this, uh, I'll kind of, in a panic a little bit, look over towards Elgin and see all the ghouls kind of descending towards his direction. Uh, and I am going to hold up my finger and lob a tiny little red bead of flame over here uh, and cast fireball uh, um, right on this point oh I need this there you go where's it going uh, I'm working on it oh you about to use the measurement tool there it yeah. is uh, so I'm going to I'm trying to get all these motherfuckers. So I don't think I'm going to. So I'm going to cast it here. Okay. Um, so they need to make dexterity saving throws. Okay, you got four ghouls here that are going to be engulfed in these flames. And they all need to make some dex saves. We'll start from the bottom and go up. So here's one two, three, and four. Uh, my DC's a 16, so the ones that succeeded will take half damage. The one at the very top and the one at the very bottom are caught completely unaware by this eruption of fire that absolutely engulfs them. The others just, you see, uh, this one, it's almost like it wasn't even intentional. Kind of just stumbled down. It's still on all fours trying to move towards Elgin and thus isn't caught up, uh, in the blast that much. This one seems to notice that tiny bead and immediately takes cover as best it can and will end up taking half damage because of it. Um, let's see. This one at the top Insert. and okay. bottom are completely incinerated. As Elzen, you hear this thing writhing in front of you, just blackened completely, rolling across the ground until it finally stops moving. And the top yes. one also is completely charred from this massive fireball. Yeah, take, uh, yeah six, 16 damage to the ones that succeeded. Okay. There's 16, and there's. Oh! One of these ghouls was lacking a little fortitude, as that's just enough, even though it stumbled on the ground and tried to avoid this blast. It's enough <laughs> to absolutely incinerate it. Ooh. Yes. Uh, let me find these guys on the board. That, that one. That one. And Ooh. that one. 
all incinerated. <laughs> uh, and I will jump back behind these barrels and duck down. <laughs> okay, you you fire off this fireball, and then you just take cover. Why a wise decision? That was a uh, a little more violent than I anticipated. All right, I'll be back here. <laughs> Uh, that would take us to a dead ghoul, so let's go to a live one. Uh, that'll bring us to our one that's actually fairly armored up in the back. As it is going to, let's see. It's actually going to start dashing towards you, Elgin. Five, oops, okay. 10, 15. 20. But right before it gets to you, it sort of just jukes to the side. 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. As it dashes around you at just inhuman speeds up to what it perceives to be weaker targets and stands right in front of Harkina and her children. And it's going to end its turn there. Okay. Okay. Uh, the other ghouls will proceed to start rushing in as well. Unfortunately, Stab still took the dodge action as this one is running up with a claw ready for his face. Let's see if he can dodge it, though. <laughs> what a good time to be dodging. Because he's able to <laughs> barely get out of the way of this absolutely <laughs> deadly claw coming right for his critical points again. And that'll bring us to one more ghoul for this round, the one way in the back. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. As it's trying to rush towards you, Elgin, but it just can't quite make it. Uh, he's getting close. <laughs> uh, next, you that'll get be... nothing. It'll be Harkina's turn, who is going to just spend her time seeing as this thing's right in her face and next to these children. She is also going to take the dodge action, but kind of throw herself in front of... Uh, the path of these kids. I'd put her right here, but I can't for the token there. So I'm just going to say she's like blocking this thing from going around her. And that is the end of round one. Doya, you're up again. I'm going to go with a bite. Okay, that one is going to miss. As you go to bite this one, it's, it's just, again, it's proving its agility as it ducks out of the way of your chomp. Then we will again use a first level spell slot to try to heal. Okay. Solid. You again burn one of your inner spells, and many of your wounds start healing up this time as you heal a, a good chunk of damage from the previous battle and, and this one, actually. Uh, you're still looking, uh, your wolf form at least, is still looking pretty pretty beat up, but you're doing all right. Anything else? You know what? I know I'm going to take a hit for it, but I'm going to sort of kind of retreat in and try to help form a perimeter. All right. Uh, as you try to move away, a set of claws does swing at you, but the way you leap back, you just barely jump out of the way of these claws. All, All right, good. And we are going to move on to Elgin. You're up. Let's go. All right. So I got this bad boy in front of me. This guy right here. Uh, You know what? Just for a brief moment, I am going to turn my back towards this guy. Because I want this guy right here. I want him gone. Uh, so what we're going to do is a little toll of the dead. And this one, yeah, he's missing health, so yeah, we're giving that. Let's he's see. Definitely missing health. He, he is gonna uh, have to make a Wisdom DC 16 save versus necro uh, or versus necrotic damage. All right. He failed. Awesome. Do you take five damage, or does he take more than that? Yeah. Uh, no, no, he just takes the he just takes the five. Okay. Uh, as far as I can tell. You can see your it just, toll. It was a low roll. I, I got you. I got you. This this toll of the dead. You you see him sort of writhe and crick and cock his neck a bit, 
as he's trying to maintain his ground and uh, go for these easier targets. It looks like you definitely did some good damage to him, but he's he's still standing for the moment. Okay. Uh, and then... Oh, let's see. Beyond that... I think I still have one more thing I can do. And that is going to be a... Shield of Faith. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna since since Doy is trying to do the the Lord's work over here. <laughs> uh, we're gonna go ahead and cast Shield of Faith on him, and uh, he'll get a plus two bonus to his AC. Okay, so through all the chaos and all the people in front of you, you point with your intent of putting a shield on Doya, and it definitely reaches him. Doya, your body starts to just lightly shimmer as you feel this barrier envelop you. Your skin and your body suddenly feels tougher. Like if something tries to hit you, maybe it'll reflect off a bit better. Yeah. And then I guess... Uh, I'll just scoot up a little bit to meet that guy, and then I'm done. Okay. That is going to bring us to Stab, who's currently eyeing two ghouls. Um, and uh, Stab would likely, at this point, fight. I don't think he'd, he'd keep dodging in the face of two enemies, because he thinks he can take them down, probably. So he's going to start swinging! Yeah! Uh, let's see what he's going to do. His attacks aren't actively in Foundry, so I could just type it out. That's fine. As he takes his rapier, he's going to go in for a stab on the one just to the north of him. And his proficiency in dex, that would give him a fix. And that absolutely connects with this ghoul that's above him. Um, unfortunately, there's no allies around it will so it won't be a sneak attack but it'll be some rapier damage as he's able to stab into it for four damage not a lot but every little bit helps um he will use his bonus action to follow up with his short sword he gets as proficiency bonus to that because he is a dual wielder uh his second swing however will not connect as the ghoul is reeling from the first blow he underestimates his second and just slices the air right in front of him that will be the end of his turn. Which will actually bring us to that same ghoul that's going to retaliate with his own claws. And this time, actually connect with Stab. This is the first set of claws that have hit. Um, Stab will take... Nine slashing damage. He's looking... Looking pretty banged up now, and I need him to make a constitution savings throw. Which will be... That. Uh, and he succeeds. When he these claws connected with him, he... Um, I hope I will be looking over in that direction. Not many of you, so I'll just subscribe to Stab. Yeah. Stab puts his hand on his chest where those claws just connect, kind of gripping it for a moment, almost like something else was was laced on those claws or some sort of dark necrotic poison but is able to resist it fortunately nothing happens that's the end of that ghoul's turn Rhea now being uh, just ganged up on by these enemies will immediately turn around move towards this ghoul that's eyeing Harkina and this child and ready her longsword to swing it twice As she, as normal, swings downward first and then comes back with a side swipe. Both of these, I believe, yep, are going to connect. As she quickly and hastily fells this enemy, the first slash sending it almost reeling to the ground, the second one spinning at 180 as it slams into the ground, rides for a moment, and then stops moving. Good work, Rhea. Year. And you were that one. Uh, next up, we have another ghoul, uh, also aiming at Stab here. Hopefully, he could take another set of claws. 
And unfortunately, this is going to connect with him for six damage. Can he stay standing? Yes, he can. Stab almost hits the ground as he falls to one knee, looking exceptionally hurt, but slowly starts standing up. Uh, he also feels something starting to course through his veins, but fortunately is able to resist it again. Stab is looking very, very beat up right now. Hayes, you're, you're not up yet. I'm sorry. Lulu gets to go first. <laughs> Lulu's going to do a quick <laughs> tusk attack on this uh, ghoul in front of her. Hey, Jamie, I know you're juggling like 50 different things. Uh-huh. Uh, the ghoul that I was fighting initially is still not gone. I, I think you jumped him in order. Let me see. No, he went after Stab, I believe, didn't he? Did he not go? Uh, I think you had him be the one Stab was fighting instead of the one I was fighting. Oh, I gotcha. Well, my look over is your fortitude. Let's say this ghoul was just kind of shimmying back and forth. He didn't know how to approach. <laughs> so he's deciding He's deciding how to move in, and for that, he's taking way too long. Stab, okay. Stab in chat says to use Lucky to not die. Oh, okay. Stab. Yeah, good call. Next time uh, it looks like death's coming for you, we'll use a little bit of luck and see if that can do something. Um, and also, Lulu's tusk just completely miss. Uh, there's too many too many targets around. She stabs the air. Uh, hey, she, she was flustered. Yeah, she was flustered. Uh, I will conjure up the winds beneath my feet. Your uh, wings? Which will, oh, man, never which will carry me here, uh, at which point I will move couple steps further here and as I'm going I will hold out my palm and launch a frozen dagger uh, at actually I'll move here and I'll throw an ice knife at this one at the uh, second level okay um, da -da -da -da. that's gonna be a 28 to hit uh, it's going to hit. This absolutely pierces right through this top one. And it takes, jeez, it's going to take, uh, what it's is that, 21 eight damage? Pier eight piercing damage first. They both need to make dexterity saving throws. Okay, so I'm going to do its eight real quick here. Uh, it's still standing at the moment, just with an icy hole through its chest. Let's get some dex saves out of them. There's one for the top one and one for the lower one. Uh, so the top one will take half damage so he'll take an additional six and the bottom one will take 13 cold damage all right this third thir uh this bottom one which was barely touched it had just a small little puncture wound from a tusk that pierced it earlier is now looking quite hurt uh the top one just barely is able to keep standing has a hole in his chest um i don't even know what else happened to him he's looking tore up though but he is still in fighting shape for the time being Uh, and that is the end of my turn. All right, that's going to bring us to a ghoul. Uh, specifically, one of the ones in front of Stab, which it's going to try and finish the job as it raises its maw and leans in to bite him. And as on death's door as Stab is, he sees this bite coming and just kind of leans and shoves this ghoul to the side keeping its maw off of him and pushes it back Stab says to fire a warning shot <laughs> uh, Unfortunately oh Stab you're fighting for your life no time to fire a warning shot at the moment uh, This sure? next ghoul <laughs> I think is uh, Who's this next ghoul? Oh it's the one up engaged with you Elgin I will. This guy is going to try to use his claws on you while he's in your face which he is unable to do. This thing is just raking and raking and scratch after scratch is slamming this shield repeatedly that you actually feel, um, it almost feels like the energy is starting to, or the, the shield's starting to gain some sort of energy as you're holding it up. Ooh. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> but that's the end of its turn, which brings us back to this Harkina hunt. 
right. seeing that there's very few ghouls left, she grabs her children and starts stepping back. And they're gonna they move with her, so they all go together. And she huddles them close to her, trying to protect them. Uh, that would bring us to a new round, Wolf Doya. Wolf Doya is going to smell <laughs> blood in the air and noticing the stab is hurt, is going to switch targets to this one. All right. He's then going to use hack tactics for advantage, and then he's going to do a bite. To bite down this ghoul. You got enough oomph to put him down. That is definitely going to hit, and that is barely going to be enough oomph as you lean in and just latch onto this thing right between its shoulder and neck and just clench and kind of twist. You know you know how animals like to grab someone, kind of twist their head back and forth a bit? You just rip pieces of this ghoul out as it falls to the ground, bleeding and dead. And I'm going to push forward just a little bit. Okay, and you move up a little bit ready on the next one. It's looking very, very almost done. That then your turn. That's the end of my turn. Elgin, you are up. All right, let's bring it. Uh, let's give. I want to give this uh, this ghoul that's uh, sitting up in front of me. He's 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 too close. He's too close. So um, I want to give him a little smacky smack with the heavens fall mace. Okay, that is absolutely um, going to hit. <laughs> for a total of nine bludgeoning and four radiant total of 13 and you, here and you know what uh let's see we got a um a smite we got a thunderous smite uh i believe uh cocked and loaded so um we're gonna do that too Ooh. uh so you slam <laughs> Heavens fall into this ghoul, and it catches and almost sticks inside of him with such force you impacted it with. And immediately, this energy channels through your shoulder, almost like a, a light moving to your arm as it just flies up to your arm into your mace. And you all hear this echoing, <laughs> reverbing feedback as it slams a hole right through this ghoul. It flies Whoa. back five feet dead Gross, on the dude. ground. Why'd you do that? <laughs> Wait, and at this moment, I want to use the rest of my turn to, tur to turn around uh, as he falls and blood is splattering everywhere and, and do like a... <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. I don't want to do that. But that would be awesome <laughs> if I could. Uh, <laughs> now that uh, this asshole is done in... I'm gonna run. Uh, I'm gonna use what's left of my turn to boom, 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 boom. Get right in here. Uh, cause I want me. I, I wanna. I wanna help protect. Uh, I wanna help protect Stab. He definitely needs it. So you move up <laughs> and you kind of hold position next to him against this. These uh, last two ghouls remaining. Is that the end of your turn? That is it. Okay. That's actually gonna take us to Stab, who is just brutally wounded sees his targets brutally wounded does some math in his head for just a moment while just panting and then raises his rapier trying to stab this thing hoping to kill it before it kills him will that hit this ghoul just barely it will it, let me guess, is it because of the... <laughs> because we're flanking? It happens to be because a few allies are around. <laughs> As he holds his rapier and just pierces through this thing right through one of its eye sockets. And then pulls oh. his rapier back. This guy hits the ground dead. Uh, and as his uh, bonus action... Uh... Stab is going to use his, uh, he's going to use his cunning action to just, oh, no, he doesn't have to cunning action. He can still move. Stab is going to limp back to where more allies are gathered away from the combat. And he passes by Rhea and Hayes and says, guys, I don't feel so good. And he just walks past Rhea a bit more and stops. <laughs> That'll take us to the ghoul that was engaged with Doya. It finally figured out its solid plan. After all this thinking and all this time, 
it's gonna run in and dive at Doya with its mouth. And Doya, it's uh, as this thing's diving at you, you almost just meet it in the air, just shoving your body in it, and it. It, it didn't really expect this as it slams into you and falls back uh, completely throwing off its bite attack that's all it's going to be able to do uh, Rhea is going to you know Rhea's a goddamn fighter she sees threats she goes for him so she thinks that the, the kids and whatnot are all are okay for the time being and there's only one threat left she is going to move in for this last ghoul and try to just put it down. Oh, her first swing actually completely misses and she comes up with that side swipe. Same exact way, just not quick enough for this ghoul. Seems like this guy had time to level up a little bit while he was strategizing. That's gonna bring us to, gonna take us to Lulu. You know what, Lulu, Lulu's, we're gonna, Lulu's gonna chill for now. She's gonna, she's gonna chill for now, it's gonna flutter back. Because, actually, yeah, it's going to flutter back to these kids. Kind of float up to one's face and just go, Are you all right? Are you okay? And just right up in this kid's face. And the kid just is, is basically in shock at the moment, so it's not really responding. Hayes, you're up. Okay. Um, let's see. One, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. <laughs> Uh, I will walk around this side and let's see let's that. Um, and I will reach out my hand and lift up a small uh, piece of debris from the burning building and I would like to catapult it towards this one here and he would need to make a dexterity save alright this debris goes flying at him with neck-breaking speeds. And he fails. So... I think this is the first time I've hit with this thing. <laughs> um, Jesus. Not impressive. He, uh, he'll take seven damage. He Blood. almost gets out of the way of it, but this debris just slashes into his cheek and his lower jaw, almost just dangling his lower jaw off as it cuts through him. Uh, he's still standing, though, but he is looking badly wounded and half jawless. End of turn. And that would bring us to Miss Harkina. Harkina's going to hold her ground with her kids. Doya, you're up. On round four. Master Doya. Oh, there you are tactics and the advantage bite okay that is uh absolutely going to hit and that's gonna be enough to finish this last guy off as you bite into him and just just like before you know that critical spot right around that neck area you just clamp down as far as you can and rip out pieces of this ghoul it hits the ground more dead than it already was and that was our last Ghoul. That will bring us out of combat. So, you guys are surrounded by these ghoul corpses, burning buildings, smoldering flames, this crackling black sphere in the sky, randomly striking lightning everywhere. Fortunately, not where you guys are yet. You have a family you've managed to protect. But for the moment, just for this quick moment, you have a brief respite. Mm. What kind of drop to like since we've gotten here? Nothing but enemies. Well, it suppose it is hell. Mm, I Uh, Stab, y you okay? Kind of call out over to him. Uh, not not really, but it's okay. I I brought I brought drinks. I brought fruit punch. <laughs> he starts digging around in his bag weekly, and pulls out uh, two healing potions. Actually, 
I'm gonna put a hand on his back. Put those away. He looks at you for a moment and back at his drink says, I mean, I'm thirsty too, but all right, I'll put him, I'll put them away. And he puts him <laughs> back up. How much is a uh, stab missing? Uh, stab is looking incredibly wounded. It looks like he's maybe at like, he might be, how do I put this? Cause I don't want to use direct numbers. He, he's missing a lot. I'll put it that way. Like okay. probably all more right. than you could actually do. Okay. I'm going to give, I'm, I'm going to, uh, while my hand is on his shoulder, I'm going to immediately expend all, uh, 25 charges of, uh, of my lay on hands. So he will be healed for 25 hit points. Okay. This holy energy floods through him as these pierces and bites and claw marks on his chest and shoulders and legs just start to slowly seal. Um, it looks like even after this massive amount of holy energy you poured into him, he still has a few open wounds on him, but he is looking way, way better now. And he says, uh, okay, yeah, that, that works. I'm feeling, I'm feeling a lot better. Thanks, muscles. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> and I'm gonna walk over towards, uh, um, uh, was it Harkino? Mm-hmm. And uh, and the kids, and ask if they're okay. Uh, Harkina says, it, "It, it, was an ambush too. Thank you, friends. I, we'd be dead twice over if it wasn't for you. But we are unharmed, minus that one beast that, that almost." And she looks to her kids and just kind of hugs them tightly. Lightly sobbing. I'll uh, I'll walk over there as well. Um, you s- said they were. It was an ambush, an ambush for for you. She looks to you, Hayes, and uh, kind of wiping a uh, tears from her eyes, and says, "There's no end to the horrors in this place now." devilish fiends, undead abominations. Sometimes they kill each other. They're all trying to hunt and take what they can of the the common folk. I've I've seen them argue. I've seen them kill each other. By common folk, you're referring to the survivors of El Terrell. She nods at you. How many of you are left, or do you know? I, I, I don't know. There were the few we left behind, but not, not long after we left, we heard shouting and and didn't look back. Hmm. Well, I'll uh, turn back to Elgin and Stab and Doya and Rhea. And Lulu. I'm not. I'm not paying any attention to her right now. <laughs> uh. Well, do we need to find somewhere to take shelter, or should we try and press on towards Cat the Keep? Good question. I'm almost afraid to even do this, but I'd like to do another perception check to see if I hear or smell anything else coming. <laughs> oh, because you know what happened last time you did that, huh? Yes, you did. Book it. All right, tell me what specifically how you're doing this perception check. Like, how are, what, are, I, what is Wolf Doya doing? I want to smell for the smell of undead things or the he, uh, listen for the maybe boots or whatnot running on these cobblestone streets. Okay. I would normally impose a disadvantage in this case if you're trying to smell or hear, because right now the sound of cackling fire and the smell of ash and smoldering wood surround you. But I think normally you get advantage with doing that, so you can just do a perception check. Perception check it is. Okay. 
you sniff the air, and, and like I said before, you smell the burning embers and smoldering ash that surrounds you, and seems to be taking effect over most of the city, just looking around in the, the areas you can see. Uh, but you try your best to listen for anything else besides the sounds surrounding you, and smell anything else other than the massive amount of death that currently is at your feet. And you don't smell or hear anything of the sort, or rather, you can't at the moment. Which way is it towards the the tower thing? The uh, back to High Hall. Let me show you. Um, I'm uh, gonna... Direction on the map. Right here, where we're at. Uh, it would be to the. Let's see. You guys are. If you're right here, let me activate the world map for you. So if you scroll out, you'll see a tiny little light with a little Lulu in the middle. Uh, that is currently where you guys are. If you scroll out even more in the distance, that um, uh, half destroyed keep sits high atop on a hill uh, across El Terrell. So it looks like it's to the west from where you are. I would like to slowly take a few steps towards that direction. Okay, how far are you going? Just enough to sort of signify intent. Okay, uh, all of you see huge wolf doya uh, just slowly mm -hmm. kind of uh, walking Limp. that direction. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow after. Uh, but while I do, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to speak with Gargoth. Um, and, uh, see what maybe he might know about what's going on here. Okay, go for it. Well, we've we've been here in this hellhole not even 15 minutes and we've been beset upon by foes left and right. Is there anything you'd like to share, Gargoth? Uh, all of you hear this in your heads and uh, you don't see Harkina turn or, or show any worry on her face, so it's likely that she can't hear this. Uh, same with Lulu, but all the rest of you here Yes, Paladin, there is. It's time for my freedom. Thank you for your aid. And you feel this shield actually get a little bit warm as it feels mm. like some large spell is being channeled right directly into it. And with the shield attached to you, your arm actually feels kind of hot. And then you hear mm. Gargoth say, It's time, finally. I will be free from this curse. Free from this attack. Cursed curse! As the shield rattles slightly, and you hear, all of you hear him just laughing in your heads as the mm. shield vibrates more and more. You have to hold your arm in the shield itself to stay steady until suddenly it stops, completely motionless. And then you hear, What? What is this? How, how am I not free? Where did I go wrong? What happened? Paladin, what is this treachery? I've done nothing, but it seems you were planning to welch on our deal. The deal? Any reason why? The deal is never sealed until a contract is signed. It is known among devils. I intended to play you and here I am. Nothing now. Well. This is sad. How the mighty have fallen, Gargoth. Well. Since you seem to be... Rather useless to me. A devil that won't even back up its own word that'll 
run at the first sign of freedom. Gargoth starts to interrupt you, but if you want, I can. I'm gonna. I'll let you keep going if you want to prevent him from talking. <laughs> oh no, go ahead. Let, let, I, I'm curious. I'm curious what okay. you have to say. Okay. Uh, the shield says, <laughs> "Wait, wait. A new deal can be formed. A true deal. A contract signed. I will grant you every essence of my strength, power untold. Right now, not over time, not earned. Simply given." Really? Find a way to free me. And right now, I'll grant you all of my potential. <laughs> huh. Okay. Now, here's the real question. You're still going to try and run at the first sign of freedom, aren't you? We set the contract terms. I will abide. You will abide. If one of us breaks it, their soul forfeit. Hmm. How about this? We stop that evil piece of shit and maybe just maybe that might just sweeten the pot a little bit I not saw. just you getting free but you actually have to help us stop her a deal can be made a contract you find my freedom. I hope you stop the Duke of Avernus. Hmm. That sounds like a much better deal than before. Question. Before I agree, what are you gonna do when the Duke is gone? What knowledge can you gain from this? I was once a duke myself. A leader among devils. I will find my place in Avernus and feel, fill the empty void. Hmm. Truly better the devil I know than the devil I don't. Hmm. Fine. We have a deal. When you say that, Elgin, this time, in front of you, it almost looks like a small little wormhole opening up as this rift slowly opens up, and in a poof, a piece of parchment, almost like a scroll, floats in front of you, and a quill mm. right next to it. The contract is here. I must abide once you sign, and so shall you. Read it, if you wish. And when you're ready, pluck your finger and sign in blood. All of you see this contract appear in front of Elgin as well. Have, we, have I heard all of this discussion? Yeah, all of you have heard all of this. My slow meander to the west has stopped as I stare back at this. <laughs> um, I actually am going to read over it just to see what it says. <laughs> uh, okay, make a... Uh, make a perception check with advantage. All right, all right. Let's see. Nope. Okay, it didn't automatically do it. Okay. Because okay, is, is anyone... anyway. Oh, yeah, with advantage, there you go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. Is anyone else doing anything at the moment? Uh, Elgin's currently reading over the scroll that appeared. Um, I'm going to go from my knee and just kind of sit on my butt on the ground a little bit, and I'll, uh, I'll just say... Be sure to read the fine print. Um, 
deals with devils are generally not what they appear on the surface. Well, of course. I'm reading it thoroughly. <laughs> okay, and Stab sort of just is uh, tending to the rest of his wounds. He sees this scroll appear, and uh, you know what? He'd actually be really curious about that. He'll get up and kind of come over and start just watching you look at it and try to start reading it himself. Doya, what are you doing? Just watch it. I'm okay. a wolf. <laughs> Uh, let's have Stab's just going to read it over to he gets a okay he, he just he kind of glances at it and says this looks good I um yeah you know yeah you got it and just walks back <laughs> uh, but looking over the contract Elgin it looks like it specifies specifically that uh, Gargwath will assist in dethroning the Duke of Avernus in exchange for his freedom guaranteed by one Elgin. Okay. And on terms of... It, it mentioned it's very fancy, but it's where it's something on... And in a case of failure on either party's side, one soul is forfeit to the other. So it's worded as if you would get Gargwath's soul or he would get yours if one of you did not fulfill your end by the time that one end is fulfilled. Okay. I'll take it. Just be sure we're not replacing one foul soul with another. Oh, I'm sure that either way, this is going to be awful. Do we really, do we really do we really need him that much? We're trapped in, well, for the time being, trapped in hell of our own volition with a Duke of Avernus to destroy. I don't know about you guys, but right now, I don't know if we're strong enough to take on the Duke. I mean, we've been here for less than an hour, though. Yes, and we've already been... Find what is ahead of us. You're just going to th throw your soul away. Uh, let if me it's for... be very clear. Make sure, absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, that this is what you want to do. Because speaking from experience... It generally does not pan out well. Elgin, I'm only certain. only you mm -hmm. hear yes. this in your head at the moment. Mm -hmm. As you hear, the mage tries to talk you out of the power I offer. He is inexperienced. He does not understand true sacrifice. To sort of reinforce Hayes' statement, you see a giant dire wolf step up behind him and sort of kind of give you a piercing glare. <laughs> I've thought this through. All of this is in service of the goal to get rid of the Duke of Avernus and hopefully, hopefully restore El Terrell. No more, no less. Well, if you are certain, I will follow you uh, and your lead. But no, if it comes down between right and wrong, and you have no control over yourself, uh, I will not hesitate to remove the threat. I'm going to uh, approach both uh, Doya and uh, Hayes. And, uh, as I do, I'm going to kind of just walk past them. And uh, as I do, just say, I wouldn't have it any other way. And then I just keep walking. <laughs> I'll, uh, In the direction I'll... that Doya was originally going. <laughs> I'll uh, look up at Doya and I'll just give him a little scritch behind his ear. 
and uh, start walking. <laughs> the contract appears in front of you again, Elgin, almost halting your paces as you hear Gargoth in your head alone again say, We have a deal if you sign in blood. Oh, yeah, there was that thing. And uh, I'll take the quill, prick the prick my uh, left pointer, and sign Elgin Greybalkin. Okay, and as soon as you sign, it's almost like a small flame traces your blood on that parchment as it vanishes in front of you, almost in like another poof. And as mm. soon as it does, you feel this shield swelling with power and coursing through your body, this almost demonic energy as you gain something here. You now have attuned properly with the shield of the Hidden Lord. It's in your inventory if you want to check it out. Ooh. <laughs> Poo brain, I don't, I don't think we have any lawyers on hand to read that over. <laughs> no, while you're reading that, uh, we're going to go ahead and proceed down this path. So oh, yes, yes, yes. Elgin uh, feels this newfound energy. You see him kind of almost assessing his capabilities now as you all are walking down this lane. You are just surrounded by decrepit buildings, uh, some on fire some overturned, a few toppled halfway onto the street, so you have to go around. The air is still just burning hot, and the sky still crackles occasionally with lightning. You go for a brief bit. This is going to mess up the camera again, but I'll fix it. Go. Till you enter a what looks to be a large open area. And you just see tons of market stalls just turned over, destroyed, on fire, essentially like the rest of El Terrell, it seems. But you hear a voice uh, on the side. I'll say most of you can hear it, because uh, they're not, not, it's not like they're trying to be quiet. Let me find this. Uh, as you look to your right approaching this area, uh, close to some of the buildings, almost in like an alley, uh, you see an imp talking with a halfling. Uh, the two are so focused on each other, it looks like they wouldn't even notice if you started just walking up, if you want to overhear what they're saying or do something else. What are y'all doing? Um, how far off are they? Uh, maybe about 30 feet out. They're, they're not, and they're super focused on each other right now. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a few steps forward and see if I can hear what they're saying. Okay. I'll kind of, I kind of just want to saunter over there, just kind of looking to the left and to the right, just like I'm minding, like like this market isn't completely in, on fire, almost like I'm perusing the market. I'm like, what thing in there? No, okay. And as you're uh, just kind of walking up, you see one of those contracts appear, almost how it did with Gargoth, right in front of the halfling. As you now hear a, a little bit of talking from the imp, as it says. Yes, this will provide food, much food, a month's worth. Yes, it is worth it. You must survive. Your family must survive. And the halfling's kind of saying, uh, Oh, well, I, I guess if this is what it takes, we, we can't starve and we don't know how long we'll be here. Uh, I suppose. And he, he starts reaching for the quill. I'll, uh, kind of put up my finger. Just say, um... Have you had anyone else look over that? Uh, as soon as you say that, he looks at you and kind of makes a startled face. The imp looks at you and uh, makes a, a half scowl. And then uh, the halfling calls back, Um, n n no, I, I was, I just need food to survive and this creature was offering it. Uh, to which the imp calls out, Yes, yes, none of your business. Go survive elsewhere. Oh. Well, that sounds like a fantastic deal. What? How very generous of you, Mr. Uh, I look at the imp. Almost like I'm looking for a name tag. It just it just looks at you and cocks its head, still half scowling. Right. 
Well, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Hayes, and um, I'm actually, at least it seems, I'm going to be pretty good at reading over devilish contracts because this is the second one in like 30 minutes. Do you mind if I take a look? Uh, the halfling says, um, it may, maybe that would be best. Yes, yeah, in terms of the imp. Trishamp looks at him and just rolls his eyes and his head and says, <laughs> Yes, yes, come, come, new stranger, come read. Sure, make sure that I am being up front. A deal is a deal, and you will make sure that he is making the deal. Right. And I'll go <laughs> I'll move forward and uh, take a look at the contract. And as you walk up, the imp says, a simple deal, a simple deal. His soul on death for a month of rations for his family. Yes, an easy deal to make. To which the, Just a month. the halfling says, I'm willing, I'm willing to give anything for my family, but please, please make sure it's as he says. I'll take a look at it. Make an investigation check for me. Okay, so you start reading this contract, and uh, as you make it halfway through, it's it's very wordy. It's it's very and thine the soul will be procured <laughs> upon the death of thine self into. It's like it's almost like it's intentionally convoluted, but reading through it, you notice a a strange line mentioning a little bit more than just this halfling soul, uh, which you determine now his name is Plister based on the contract you're reading. Uh, but the contract seems to promise more than just Plister's soul, but Plister's entire family, if he assigns it. Hmm. I'll, I'll just kind of skim my finger down the, down the contract, just kind of, yeah, yes, uh, yep, yeah, okay, uh, one month of food, uh, soul, soul, soul. Mr. Plister, um... I, uh, and I'll kind of take the page and kind of turn it, look at the back. Um, it seems to me here that, uh, there is more than one soul, uh, listed here on this contract. Was that what, uh, ex your name? I I'm sorry, I didn't ask your name. Are you talking to the halfling? Yeah. Um, it, it, but, but Plister. Oh, he's Plister. Okay, I thought you meant the the imp's name was Plister. Mm -mm. Okay. Uh, was was there more than one soul uh, on the on the agreement that you spoke of, Mister Plister? The imp starts gritting his teeth, but tries to hide it as he's staring right at you, Hayes. And also, before Plister answers, uh, Elgin, you hear Gargwath speak to you and say. Kill the imp. It possesses a coin of great value. It'll flee soon if it's found out. And then Plister answers you, Hayes, and says, I I promised my, my soul for a month of food and nothing nothing more. It looks to the imp and then back to you. Well, um, interesting. I'm sure, I'm sure it was just a, just a typo. Something we can, uh, we can get fixed right up. I'm, uh, is the, the imp, is the imp paying me any attention? Uh, the imp is not looking at you at all. In fact, let me put them over here, because you have, I know the camera got weird again, but I'll fix that. There we go, there we go. Uh, right um, now, you guys are kind of off to the side, and the, the imp is just staring at Hayes, but not in the back where you guys are at all, which you guys are only 30 feet out. Oh, God. Um, I'll say, uh, so, sure, and I'm just kind of rambling at this point. Surely, uh, and even for one soul, um, one month of food, that, that seems a little paltry. You, surely a being of your caliber is capable of far much more than one month. Who knows how long Mr. Plister will be here. As you're doing that, the, the imp starts to interrupt you as it starts to, to shout, 
We are making a deal and you are delaying it. You waste his time and mine. He has food for his family, thanks to me. And I will give... And he just <laughs> starts burning into this radiant energy. He's going to auto-fail because he's not paying attention at all. As this radiant energy engulfs his body and he starts just turning to ash. As a small black coin hits the ground and the halfling falls back onto his bottom just looking like just he has no idea what happened as he looks to you, Hayes, and says, what, what, what happened? Well, I suppose... That solves that. Uh, does the do I still have the contract in my hand, or did that burn up too? Uh, the contract fried with him. Uh, it wasn't even okay. touching him, but as soon as he started going, the contract burned too. Okay, I'm I'm, I'm gonna be honest, Mister Plister. I don't believe that imp had you or your family's best intentions at heart, and I believe he was going to take their souls as well. Most likely. Just another day helping out on the streets feels good. You need food. <laughs> Not much, but um, I'm gonna remove um, I'm gonna remove C three. I'm gonna remove four of my uh, rations and give them uh to the what was the halfling. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna give it to that other halfling. So. It's okay. not much, but there. And Do we uh, have Harkina with us? Uh, yes, mm-hmm. Harkina and her two kids are following with you. Mm. And uh, I'm also going to go past him and pick up the um, the uh, the coin. Okay. Um, Pooh says to give him the sausages in his pants that he took from the food. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a that's a ration. As <laughs> you give four neatly packed, well preserved adventuring rations to this halfling, and then Stab walks up and sets some raw sausages <laughs> on top of it, and just nods and says, "Every little bit counts." And which the halfling looks at it. He, he looks over Jordan no matter what. He says, "Thank you, thank you, friends. Please, please, my family's near. My, I'll get my wife Mary while and our our kids. Can we?" Can you get us to safety so somewhere? Maybe High Hall? Uh, well, I believe that's where we were heading. Um, this I suppose is true. the more, uh, the merrier. Do you, do you know Harkina and her children? He looks past you and looks at Rhea, and then a giant wolf, and then a woman and her children, and just says, I, I, don't, I don't know any of them. I don't know you. No, of, of course you wouldn't. I'm, the city is huge. What, what am I? Right. Um, well, you're more than welcome to join us, I suppose. Uh, right? And I'll turn back to Elgin. Oh, of course, of course. Okay, um, uh, Plister stands up, uh, thanking you profusely as he's holding the food, and he, he asks you to wait just a moment as he heads around the corner of this building, uh, down an alleyway. And, uh, within two minutes, he comes back around that corner, uh, eating some of the food you gave him, one of the rations, and his wife and three children come around the corner with him as they're all uh, eating some of the food. As uh, he says, we were, we were starving. You're truly, you're truly a blessing from Torm himself. Well, anything we could do to help, um, I will... We will. We'll see you to where you're going. High Hall, correct? High Hall. That is our destination. All right. Um, well, and I'll turn back to Elgin. Did you evaporate that imp, or did he just... That was you, right? That was me. And are, is he still holding the coin that dropped? Um, oh, yeah, I'm still holding it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, that. Uh, that coin you're holding, Elgin? Mm-hmm. Um, any, anyone who wants to actually assess that coin, because it, it's <laughs> rather big. It's like big as your hand. Yeah. Um, oh, okay, it's big. <laughs> make a... Uh, 
Make a history check for me. Let's see who's uh, done a little bit of studying in their past. Might as well get in on this. <laughs> Ooh, well, Doya well, with the big brain. Wolf Doya, you're the only one who succeeded, but you are currently a wolf. You you know that this is uh, considered a soul coin, which is like a traditional, very, very valuable currency in Avernus. Uh, you Question. also know to make one, typically, somebody has to lose their soul. How long has it been since we started that first fight? Uh, you guys would have traveled for about maybe another 10 minutes. Okay, so we're like maybe in Avernus for an hour now. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I'll file this information for later on. Sure. Do I see the wolf like just going up and like sniffing it and stuff? <laughs> you do. Yeah, he looks. He looks at you with like a, a wolf's face of understanding and just gives a solemn <laughs> nod. <laughs> well, um, I suppose we'll figure it out later, because. I, I don't know. I'm not familiar. I probably should. I feel like I should know, but I don't. <laughs> I will ask, uh, your concern at this point doesn't matter. Uh, I will ask Gargwa if he knows anything about it. Like, what it, what exactly? Why is this important? Gargwath will respond in all of your heads, all of you can hear this, and say, it is a soul coin used to trade in Avernus. Very valuable. It costs one soul to make. The halfling promises his soul to the imp. The halfling dies. A soul coin is forged. Wait a minute. So this coin... This is the hat. No, it's someone else's... Uh, Someone else's soul. Okay. Perhaps a different halfling. <laughs> it could be could be a different halfling. Could be different whatever. We'll just hold on to it for now. <laughs> well, regardless, we should, I believe, continue to high hold. I agree. Let's let's carry on. Lulu, um, what, watch the back. Okay, Lulu will watch the back, but if there's danger, Lulu will charge the front. <laughs> that sounds like a plan. <laughs> Can I continue making perception checks for threats or uh, maybe the signs or smells of people? I'm going to run with your previous Actually, check for now, since you're still just kind of doing it as you go, which was, uh, I think you had an 18, is that right? That's right. Then we'll keep going um, with that. I actually kind of want to take a moment to something I haven't done in quite a while. Actually, uh, use my divine sense. Oh, what are you sensing for? Your head explodes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's literally you're in hell. Everything's awful. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> I'm trying to see if I notice any uh, like any other fiends, any undead, any more imps or anything like that. Any any kind of um. Uh, what, whatever I can get a good sense of. Okay, so you uh, kind of kneel down and touch the ground and clear your head, sensing for any fiends or fays or undead in your area. And how far out does that go? Uh, 60 feet. Okay, you don't sense anything of the sort within 60 feet of you. Mm. Looks like we're clear. And I'll uh, stand up and kind of dust my hands off and keep walking. All right, let's go. Okay, which way are you guys wanting to head? Um, I mean, since we, it's kind of hard to see, I, I would guess like as far that way as you can go. Marketplace, yeah. Okay. You guys start trekking across the marketplace. I'm going to move you to the, the point of your camera view here. Uh, and as you're crossing the middle, you just see just, it's like all the carts are almost shoved into the middle and are burning now. Um, 
It's clear things have been rummaging through this area, but for the time being, there seems to be nothing around. Minus an imp that got incinerated. Uh, but oh, again, yeah, nothing around. Moving this far, nothing, nothing's happening at the moment. Are we just proceeding as far west as we can go? Yes. Okay. Let's see, you guys can go right here. Uh, takes about 15 minutes to get this far. Let's uh, fast travel a little bit here. Definitely. Great. As you reach this far, you now can see between the cracks of the building, it looks like a huge chasm. As you see half of El Terrell floating up a bit higher than where you are now. The city seems to have been severed in two. Well, this is great. Um, I'll look back to Lulu. I don't suppose you're strong enough to... No, no, you're not. Um, maybe there's another way around. Um, Wait. Oh, go Gargoth! Uh, as you call out to Gargoth, it, uh responds in all of your minds. You call to me, mage. There's a problem. Um, do you know a way around this chasm? Gain wings and fly. Of course. All right, we're not all Lulu. All right. Never mind. Wait a minute. Hmm. Hayes, is there not anything you can do? What, like, because I'm a... You're a sorcerer. Because I'm a tiefling, I can sprout wings and fly when I'm in hell? No, but you know magic. Hell. Wait a minute. Doya, you have some... Likely you have some kind of, I don't know, nature magic or something like that. You can't conjure some magical winged steed. You get what looks to be the strangest look you've ever gotten from a wolf, as he's entirely confused as to what you think he can do. <laughs> <sighs> no one. I'm going to look at Stab like... <laughs> no, <stab wouldn't. sighs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How like how how far how how far and wide is this uh this chasm again? Uh it's it's pretty pretty damn far. Like you can see the size of these houses, so maybe like mm. four houses long. So if a house will say that's maybe like I was 180 feet, maybe. I'm really bad with distances, so multiply that by oh, four, God. and there's your there's your distance. Mm. Uh, while you're all thinking about this too, uh, a couple of you, I would say, have noticed it just by turning and looking through the chasm. Perched on top of one of the buildings is a, a winged creature uh, with a long beak, claws for hands, and just kind of. It looks like he's looking at you, but not at the same time. Let me show you what he looks like. Um, go. He looks like this. <laughs> Galvling? <laughs> but one of his claws is on his chin as he has his head tilted. Uh, it looks like he's <laughs> thinking. It looks like he's noticed, noticed you as well, but just seems to be just thinking. How far off is he? Uh, he's about 100 feet away. Before the creature comes over here, I'm going to ask Gargwalf, what the hell is that? As you say that, uh, Gargwalf responds, a frock, normally under orders from another. This one, this one seems to be pondering. Indulge it. Do we all okay. hear that? Uh, you all do hear that. All right. I'll, I'll start to kind of walk towards the rock. And when I get in, like, shouting distance, I'll just say, What are you thinking about? Uh, when you say that, it 
it kind of raises its head a little bit and takes its hand off its chin for just a moment, almost like it's assessing you. And then you hear it shout and just flail its hand, saying, It just seems so pointless. I slaughter until I am slaughtered. Then I am given life again, only to do the same. Can a being born to murder and slaughter change? What would I even do instead? What is the meaning of it all? Is there any? Perhaps it would feel more fulfilling to take a life if I knew what value it held. And he puts his paw back on his beak and just continues to think. My eyes kind of glazed over when he was going through that. <laughs> that is a question that many have pondered. Um, but I suppose, yes, knowing the value of something could could, uh, I don't know, increase your level of satisfaction with slaughtering it, I suppose. Um, to be honest, I don't really know what the point is, but where you're sitting, that does sound quite boring, just doing the same thing over and over and over and over again for what I could assume would be millennia. Time is fleeting. We all possess it, yet lose it. We all crave more, but are only given what we have. Well, time is the one thing we cannot get back. Make Speaking a... of... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, no, no go ahead. I was going to say, make, go ahead and make a persuasion check for me. Okay. Uh, while while I'm doing this, um, I'll say, God, I'm rolling such shit tonight. <laughs> um, I'll say, uh, do you know what could be a really different thing for you uh, and us to give my companions and I a ride right over there? How different and cool would that be? Very cool. Would be very cool. <laughs> very different. Very, very cool. The Vrock looks intrigued by this <laughs> idea. Um, do that pers uh, persuasion with advantage. Okay. Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. So, uh, the Vrock says, I am to watch and kill any that scurry about and bring the bodies below, but I bore with this and I muse and I wonder why. I cannot fly you across, however. And he looks towards uh, the north and says, one of your bridges lies intact. Cross it if you wish to go. Well, that is quite helpful. Thank you. Uh, your name, what What was it again? As soon as you ask that, it puts its claw on its chin again and starts looking down and says, Is a name given or earned? Do I possess a name? Or do they simply call me Vrock? Why don't Got you... A name for you? Why don't you start this journey out with a name? I say we call him the Vrock. <laughs> A name. Uh, per perhaps he could take up instead of, you know, procuring souls, he could procure food. And then we could all ask, do you smell what that rock is cooking? <laughs> that actually does sound good. A name is good, yes. The rock. You call me <laughs> the rock. <laughs> And your last name can be Says. <laughs> the Vrock Says. Yes. It is <laughs> clear now. Much to be gained and learned still. Yes. Thank you. Oh, thank you. The Vrock. Uh, the Vrock yeah. immediately lifts off this building excitedly and flies down into this crevice below. 
and disappears from sight. Well, he was really nice. He was the nicest one here so far. No, well, with the exception of you all, and I'll kind of motion towards uh, the halfling and the humans and all the children. <laughs> <laughs> you all fine, but everything else here has quite literally tried to murder us. This, I would say, is true. We've quite literally had to fight, scrape, and I would dare say even maybe even do a little hero work since we've gotten here. It's nice to not have to do anything of the sort. Maybe we've made some positive change here. Yeah. If maybe, but just a little. I, one can hope. Baby steps. I really hope he does open a business. That would be very great for him. <laughs> Fingers crossed. But that still uh, leaves us with a predicament. Uh, this getting to this bridge, I suppose, yes? Yes. Well, I suppose we could just walk. and We don't really have another option. Yeah, that's fair. Well, I say we not stand on ceremony lest we be attacked again. That sounds good to me. And I'll kind of look to the left, look to the right. I'll look across the chasm again and I'll start walking north okay uh, you all proceed to start traveling north hopefully where the rock says there's a bridge um uh, but before we go that far we're gonna take a quick break we're gonna do about 10 minutes maybe get some some drinks and whatnot but we're gonna be back because we got a we got quite a few more things going on here and unfortunately they're not all just hey a bad guy violent like the Vrock says right there, right? So <laughs> we'll be back in 10, y'all. We're going to take a quick break.
and we are back so you guys just had a friendly conversation with a with a philosophical rock it seems you even gave him a name which he seemed pretty happy about and then just peaced out after giving you some helpful information about an intact bridge to the north which you all are starting to pursue but there's something else I need y'all to deal with immediately. I need to know the marching order currently. And it could be, y'all could be, the road's super wide. So y'all could be side by side, just one guy up front. You name it. Just let me know. Um, um, point. Oh, okay. You want to be up front, Doyle? <laughs> I'll be up front. I'm sniffing and uh, patrolling. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll hang out in the middle. Um, I'm going to, again, tell Lulu to cover the rear and she she happily abides as she uh is, keeps fluttering around the children just kind of tilting her head and flapping her ears sometimes trying to just be playful and and keep their minds off uh, everything around you would that make you second or third uh i guess uh, third because if doy is taking the front i'm assuming elgin's up there too yeah i'm gonna be right alongside Side by side, Doya. Yeah. Okay. And Stab will be, uh, I guess, with you, Hayes. He'll walk with you. Okay. Um, oh, my God. We have best friend up. bracelets. So. Okay. That's true. You do have the friend bracelets. So, you all start to travel north. Um, the cackling and the thunderous sounds from the companion high above, or what was once the companion, still just striking El Torello at random intervals. But one of those bolts gets quite a bit too close. Elgin and Doya, as you're leading the way, a bolt strikes the front of a two-story house just right next to you, almost sending you reeling back already as the building starts to collapse in your directions. I need you both to make dexterity savings throws. Oh. Uh... Oh god. Okay. Um So as this building's coming down, uh Wolf Doya, you're able to bounce back and get out of the way as quick as possible. Elgin, you turn and start running back towards the group, mm. but a piece of it catches you and then another and then another as multiple rocks just pound onto your armor. But you're able to avoid most of it. You weren't crushed, but you do take mm. 18 bludgeoning damage. Oh, shit. Oh, God. All right. All the commoners are, are mm. kind of standing in fear now, having seen this bolt strike this house and take it down, uh, blocking most of the path, but not all of it. You could still go over it. But uh, I'll run up and uh, yeah. help Elgin out of the rubble. Yeah, can we dig him out? Yeah, you, you're able to pull him out. He's, he's not fully covered. He had, the upper half of his body is, is good. His legs took a good beating, though. Uh, not my legs. <laughs> not my legs, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe we watch out for lightning? I don't know. There's so many things here that want to kill us. It's a little unfair. <laughs> and I'm kind of oh. eating a ration as we're walking too. How high up is the companion again? Uh, it's way up in the air. It might be like, I don't know, 400 feet. Maybe 500. I'm Elgin, gonna... you start healing up your bruised and battered legs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna try and mend a little bit. <laughs> All right. You uh, you steady yourself and put some healing energy back in uh, to what you can. Try to recover from a goddamn house falling on you. <laughs> Anyone see where that came from? <laughs> I'll just point up. <laughs> While I'm eating like a, eat like a piece of bread, I can't help but feel that someone is trying to stop us. I 
would wager that most of things here are trying to stop us, and they don't even really care why or what we're doing here. I think they just want to kill us. I feel like someone knows we're here. Well, no, just got a bad feeling. That imp knows you're here. It doesn't matter to him anymore, though. <laughs> you know who else knows yeah. we're here? Those ghouls and those devils. <laughs> and whoever else wants to know we're here can know we're here. And I'll take another bite of my bread. <laughs> and we'll kill them, too. Well, that... I agree with one million percent. And Jamie, you said we were like right at the two hour mark almost? Mm hmm. Oh, I guess, you know, we'll go ahead and do some rounding and say it's a soul coin, and you, Doya just appears <laughs> where the wolf was. <laughs> you see Doya come back into his regular form, Wolf Doya gone. Holy. Shadow right, got a soul we, coin. We we figured that out already. Yes, I see. <laughs> I might remember a little bit of history about uh, ones that have been encountered in the past, but that's... I'm just going to look at you guys. That would probably bore you. <laughs> well, whatever it's going to happen with this thing, I think we're going to keep it safe until we can figure out more about it. Is it safe with you? Well, yeah. Why wouldn't it be? If Gargaroth gets your soul, would he get any of the soul coins that are on your possession? Maybe. But I only have the one. How many souls will it take to turn him into an even worse monster than... I'll just trail off. <laughs> as he's well. saying this, the shield actually speaks directly to you again, Elgin. As it mm -hmm. says, The druid prattles on and wastes our time. Proceed on. Honor the deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The deal, the deal. Yes, the deal. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just look at Doya and say, who's to say he isn't already worse? And I keep walking. Okay. <laughs> Do you all proceed over the debris and move around it and whatnot? Um, I'll just make a little side comment to that. Like, I, I tried to tell you before you signed the thing, but just, <laughs> I, you know, I know. Just a just descendant of some sort of person who made a deal with the devil, I suppose. What would I know? Uh, sure. <laughs> I'll keep eating my bread. How badly off are my eyes health-wise, by the way? Uh, they can tell you that. Sab's looking Just look. pretty good. He could be better, but he's doing. He's feeling pretty good. I've got some cuts and scrapes and bruises, for sure. I might have a broken rib, not sure. <laughs> Elgin? Well, I did have a house fall on me. <laughs> you did I'm, have a house fall on you. I'm not great, but uh, I'm not dead either. I'm sure there will be plenty of beds and places to rest. <laughs> right? Surely. If we can actually make it to High Hall at this rate, another house falls on me, and well. Maybe we should you just know. steer clear of houses, then. I'm not against that. I'll, I'll be go ahead and cast the wide berth. Say a <laughs> level cure wounds on you while y'all two argue about houses. <laughs> All right. You, Doya puts his hand on your shoulder, Elgin, while you're, you're talking about houses. And you feel this uh, healing energy just lightly flowing through you as a few of your wounds and cracks to your bones start mending. Awesome. Uh, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Well, thank you. Thank you, Doya. Don't make me regret it later. I have this under control. Trust me. 
and I his last you. word. Whoa. But only you. <laughs> That's probably for the best. Uh, uh, well, that said, we should... We should just hang around here and dawdle. I don't want another house falling on me. Fair enough. I'll start to, uh... I'll, I'll, like, look behind me and make sure our caravan of people uh, is still good. <laughs> when you turn and look, you see, uh... You see kind of Rhea hanging back there with her arms crossed with and head tilted, just kind of looking at Lulu. And Lulu seems to be hovering above the kids, just kind of doing this with her head back and forth. And then when you look back, she turns to you and just flutters her wings and her ears flip out real quick as she just hovers and goes back down. <laughs> Are you enjoying yourself? I, when you say that back to her, she says, Lulu does her best to make others feel good and kick evil's butt. Right, kids? And she's just <laughs> fluttering her ears back at the kids. And uh, I think... The kids say, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> they kind of just... All of them are pretty solemn and quiet, but they don't look like they're they're in shock or, or, like, super in a bad state now. They look pretty... More or less normal for the circumstances, at least. Okay, I'll just give her a, a nod. Well, you just... Keep up the good work. <laughs> I'll start to march on. All right, are you guys proceeding in the same marching order, except normal Doya? Except normal Doya. Proof. Right. You guys proceed on, and you make it to about here. Till some more shenanigans happen. Once you approach this corner, you see it about maybe about a. Uh, a hundred feet off, or I'd say maybe more like 50 feet off at this point, you see a little girl running down the street, full sprint in a panic towards you, oh, and immediately dart into one of the nearby houses. Uh, it'd be her right, it'd be your left. Uh, and you see <laughs> now going rooftop to rooftop, and then hopping on the street on all fours, they look like ghouls or some sort of undead, but much more buff is they all rush into the house maybe about 10 seconds after her. And I'm going to take y'all to a map here to determine what you want to do. Well, um, Elgin, how are you feeling about houses right about now? All right, game is unpaused, hey. my bad. I will, uh... You saw her go in this house, by un the way. Wait, wait, it's uh, the this one right here, I presume? Oh, uh, yeah, 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 in that house. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I just, uh, I don't respond. I just kind of crack my neck, unsheath my mace, and grab my shield and just start almost reluctantly walking in that direction. <laughs> <laughs> and I just look back. Well... Um. Hey, uh, Doya, did you did you heal me at all earlier? I, I was looking at something. Uh, no, I've been in wolf form this entire time. Did you need a heal? No, no. Um, you hear screaming from within the house now. I'm charging after Doya, but I need somebody to get rid of my wolf token. Oh, I can get rid of your wolf token. Sorry. I'm immediately just like, is the door closed or is it still open? That's open, wide open. All right. Okay. Um, I immediately rush in and like start looking around. Um, do I, do I see anything when I when I enter? Do I see any enemies? Uh, uh, you see something come around the corner actually, because as you rush in, uh, something comes around the corner and stares at you as well, as you see this standing down the hallway from you. Oh, God. And we are going into... Before we go into combat, mm -hmm. um, I just would turn around to Lulu and say, stay here and let us know if anything 
happens out here. Try and hide under one of the more stable looking houses. Lulu can uh, do. And I will, um, cause as I was gonna say, as we were approaching the house, uh, since I'm not taking any healing, I'm going to kind of extend my fingers, uh, just my arms and my fingers out, uh, around me and, uh, a layer of, um, magical, uh, spectral frost will kind of in envelop my entire body, uh, as I use my armor of Agatha. Okay, I'll go ahead and let you, uh, you're cutting it real close, because when Elgin went in, I technically was, combat was, should start, but was, yeah, I think you were already doing that. I was trying to say it, but everybody was talking, and I didn't All at once, yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's fine. So you, you're able to get your, your armor, this, this barrier over your body that should shield you from damage, which hopefully won't be coming your way, but maybe. I need everybody to go ahead and put their guys in combat and show me some initiative. All right. I can't roll high at all tonight, boys. Uh, you got better than me this time. There's Edgar the probably rolled some dice. The rest of our squad. That can't be bad, right? Right, guys? You probably rolled some fine. dice. Sure, it's fine. I have questions. <laughs> all right. We probably will get an answer. So first up on combat is actually going to be a target that y'all cannot see. As okay. uh, these clunky footsteps entered the house, uh, it's going to leave the area it's at, come dashing from around the corner, and just rush you head on, Elgin, and try to take you down to the ground. So it's trying to grapple you. All right. So I need you to make a sh it's strength or dex for the victim, right, Moose? Uh, yes. Okay. Make a strength or dex. I think it's athletics or acrobatics. Oh, yeah. Ath athletics or acrobatics. Uh, throw against this thing. Strength. Or athletics. I'll go athletics. Woo. And as it does, it's it looks like it's able... It's trying to just push you down to the ground, start mauling you, but you have, you have Gargoth the shield up just holding this thing at bay in front of you instead. Uh, and this is kind of just clawing at you now. Uh, which will bring us to another one of these. Actually, the one down the hall. Which will... Let's see. Can it get around? Yeah, these things are fucking berserk. It's almost like it's shoving one of its own to get past and claw into you, Elgin. So I'm going to say mm. it moves into its space temporarily, but it's not ending its turn there. Mm. As it is going to just try and strike you. Um, let's see. Yeah, this one's just going to try to use his claws at you. All right. Oh! Oh! And it, it crit failed. And that means uh, as it tries to claw you, it's actually just flailing so hard it catches its friend right next to him. He broke a nail. And it's going to do its claw damage instead to its ally. Ah! As it claws him for 13 damage. I can grab his token. Actually, I'm just going to move back. There we go. All right, that's going to be the end of his mess-up turn. Doya, you're up. Hey, so let's check something real quick. Come on. I think to start this off, we need to be blessed. So I'm going to cast Bless on myself, uh, Hayes, and Elgin. Mm-hmm. So that that way we have a D4 on all attack and saving throws for the next minute. Ooh. And then I will two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to charge up behind you and 
prepare to get into combat with you. All right. That's the end of your turn? Uh... Yes. Okay, so you get up these stairs behind Elgin, and you can see now these ghastly creatures just down the hallway. Um, that's going to take us to Lulu, uh, which Lulu will flutter and spin in circles while shouting, Lulu guards the rear, so you two get in gear! Go get them! <laughs> and just keeps uh, <laughs> fluttering back and forth between them. Uh, that would take us to yet another uh, ghast uh, that you all can't see, but you hear clawing into some wood, and you hear another scream from deeper in this house. Hey, it's up to uh, it's on you. Okay, uh, I'm going to run up to this window. And I'm assuming this door is open where I can see through. That is a see-through yeah. window. It is the? It looks like the glass is broken. I see glass on the floor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, there's just pieces of it on there now. Okay. Uh, then I will look at this gross venom creature in here, and I am going to pick up uh, with a I'm going to catapult. I'm going to pick up a piece of the broken chairs in there and try to catapult it at him from the side. So he needs to make a deck save. All right. He's going to try to avoid this side strike. Oh, and he super fails. He It's going to take 27 bludgeoning damage. Ooh, good god. This broken chair just slams into this creature's body, sending him spiraling against the wall. I'll say he's actually knocked prone from the impact of this, since he crit failed his saving throw as well. Um, I'll kind of laugh and say, oh, what, what was that? And I'll sneak back behind the window here. <laughs> All right. House is haunted. <laughs> Elgin, uh, you're up, buddy. And don't forget, you still have your uh, inspiration, just in case. Uh, oh, yes. We are, uh, we're definitely about to, uh, make some usage of that here in just a second. Um, and you're blessed. And I'm blessed. Blessed by the best. Uh, let's see. Um, this guy in front of me, he's the one that, uh, the guy in front of me, he's the one that's already been wounded. He got hit earlier by his homie. Correct. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and lay in a hammer right quick. All right. Uh, I'm, a, I'm going for both of my attacks on this one. Should we be able to see their health bars? Yes. Um, let me fix that if you can't here. I'm going to say I could see them. Yeah, they're both. Uh, yeah, they're still both set. Just hover over them, right? Yeah, yeah, I can see them. Oh, okay. When I hover oh, over, yeah. You know what? Yeah, I was just... I was being a dumbass. I was in roll 20 mode. <laughs> um, that's the first hit and going for the second. Uh, any of those fine purchase? <laughs> uh, yeah, the one in front of you looks incredibly beefy, almost like his hide is hardened to give him extra defense. But that doesn't matter because you smash the ever living life out of him twice and crack through his skin and shatter his bones with both your blows, dealing a total of 18 damage, five of being radiant. That is enough to slam this ghast into the ground. And uh, when I do so, I'm going to look at the well. The other one, he's all, he's not prone on the ground, right? I don't, I don't know if he's looking at me, but if he's he is, fine. he should. If he isn't, he should be. He should be right now, because I'm just gonna kind of let out like like the same way they're doing all this. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just <laughs> like stick my tongue out, but I'm gonna do it in a very gooberish kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> and make all fun right. of him. Yeah, you taunt them. Uh, as he's laying on the ground, he seems to just be writhing and just just making his little little tongue movements too. <laughs> yeah. 
And then I'm gonna step. I'm gonna take uh, one more step to get like right in his, like right on top of him and uh, wait for him to get back up. Okay. Uh, next up would be Rhea, who is going to 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. She's actually going to use the dash action as she just runs up and leaps through this window. Um, I'm going to have her make a little save for that. <laughs> when she runs by me, I'll be like, what? Oh, oh God. Okay, she <laughs> fortunately... The glass doesn't catch her as she just jumps and takes what little pieces that were uh, on the glass with her, but none pierce her. As she continues moving, shouting throughout the house, If you want the feast, come get me! Come after me! Just just wielding her sword, looking in every direction, and just shouting, trying to get whatever attention she can while she's in here. Uh, that's going to bring us to one of the other gas, which... Uh, so I actually work on as it rounds the corner from this back room and charges Rhea. And it is going to use its claws on her as it goes to swipe. When that's actually going to hit as Rhea gets oh. slashed for 15 damage. Ooh. Immediately, you see her body start to slightly freeze up as she needs to make a constitution savings throw. Uh, it's almost like she slowly became unable to move, but just fought through it and regains control of her body. Uh, which that's going to end that guy's turn. That's going to bring us to round two. What uh, about stab? Oh, yeah, what, Mr. Poolayer. What about Stab? I forgot about Stab again. Stab's going to go right now, actually, and I'm going to give him fresh initiative for next round, which he'll be going forth next time. But he's going to go now as he's going to 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Cunning action, 5, 10, 15. Roll up to a guest that's laying on the ground and see a shining opportunity to do what he does best. So let's go ahead and give him a rapier strike here, and he will get his trick attack because somebody is right next to his target. Um, I don't have the power to roll his trick attack here, but I believe it's 2d6. Does that sound correct, Moose? Uh, I can actually tell you here. Oh, I got it here. It's 3d6. Damn. Ooh, we were shortchanging. Let's see if he hits oh, first. Oh, it's sneak attack. Yeah. Sneak attack. Yeah, I said trick attack that night, my bad. Yeah. You made me start thinking about Final Fantasy XI. That's exactly what I was thinking of, dude. <laughs> Sneak attack, trick attack. <laughs> uh, the target is on the ground, so he gets advantage as well. Okay, either way, both were going to hit anyhow. As he stabs into this ghast for... Let's do the rapier damage first. And then the trick attack. See, I said that was 3d6, right? Yeah. Six. Okay, and he, with pinpoint precision, since this thing is still on the ground, he just takes his rapier and stabs it into the back of this thing's head quite quickly. And as soon as he pulls his rapier out, this thing stops moving completely. Good work, Stab. You got him. You did. Now it's going to bring us to the top of the round, which the guy who was going to go is now dead, so he's not going to go. Uh, that'll bring us to Doya. Doya will charge into the house, uh, shuffle past Elgin, yay, yeah. and run into this room to check it out. Okay, running into that so room, it, it seems to just like... You see a large opening. It looks like a, a window used to be to the north, but the ceiling has caved in halfway in this room. Well, go ahead and head that way. Does it look like I can go out this? Uh, yeah, there was a window there, but yeah, it looks like you could just go through now. I'm going to step out and continue looking around and apparently probably see nothing. 
Yeah, you, you are in a part of the house, but the entire wall is missing from this room on the north and eastern sides. There seems to be a few bones scattered about and dead bushes and whatnot. It looks like you're in a kind of what would have been a, a nice garden area with a fence that's no longer there. I'll just stand there and shock at what could do something like this <laughs> and in my turn. Okay, that's going to bring us back to Stab, who is going to... Uh, Start exploring a little bit of himself, and as he steps to the side, sees that Ray is engaged with something. He's gonna run around and commence the stabbing. <laughs> Whoa, as he absolutely stabs this ghast for... It's a new round, so that's some sneak attack coming in. Ten plus... 9 damage. For 19 damage he stabs in this thing. Very solid. Y'all are tearing these apart. Um, and he's going to follow up with his bonus action and swing his short sword. Oh, that's going to connect too. I believe that's a little bit less though, but he gets his proficiency. For 4 damage. A little bit more. He's going to end his turn there, helping out Rhea. Uh, which that'll bring us to Lulu, who uh, turns and sees you, Hayes, and just shouts, All's clear in the back! All's clear in the front! I give two, like, thumbs up. <laughs> okay, and that's going to bring us to... That's it, she's in her turn there. She's doing what she does. That's going to bring us to another gassed in the back uh, clawing at these cupboards and you hear another scream from inside as uh, now you hear shouting Gideon Lightboy Zariel's Redeemer Baptizer Savior Cemetery Reborn <laughs> as this you hear shrieking now but this time it's a little different it's blood curdling uh, let me see here Uh, oh, okay. All right. Yeah, and you hear just this blood-curdling screaming coming from the back room of the house now. That's going to bring us to Hayes. Um, how difficult would it be for me to climb through this window? Uh, it'd be difficult terrain, so just take an extra five feet of movement. Okay. So it's completely broken out now, so it's Rhea just literally... Swan dove through it. Okay. I'll uh, take a quick glance again back at Lulu and the rest of the people. Are they are they just standing out in the open, or, or did they get underneath the house, like I said? Uh, as soon as you all started charging forward, uh, they went to the sides, and they're, they're hiding right now. Okay. Uh, in that case, I will walk in. So 5, 15... 20, 25, 30, whoops, um, and I will cast, let's do, can't do any of that, uh, I will just shoot a, no, I'll do a chill touch. So I'll kind of reach in the air with my hand and kind of do like a gripping motion, uh, which forms a skeletal, uh, icy skeletal hand uh, that's going to try and rake across this creature. All right. Um, so that is... Uh, I need to make a ranged spell attack, which I get... I know I get a plus D4 uh, for Blessed. Yeah, all right, so here we go, Chill Touch. Does Bless add for attack rolls? Yes. Yes. Oh, wow, okay. And you get a plus... I actually forgot uh, to add my last time. It didn't matter. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's important stuff. So that's going to be a 16 to hit. 
Uh, that will hit as you f yeah. just take this skeletal icy claw in the air and launch it past Ray as it slashes at this thing's face. He will take six necrotic damage, uh, and it cannot regain hit points until the start of my next turn. Okay, uh, that... You said six necrotic? Yeah. Okay. I'll put him at... Okay, as soon as that claw slashed him, uh, it looked like the necrotic energy didn't cut into him nearly as deep as it should have. Uh, it still looks like it damaged him still, but not... Oh, let me fix that. Not as much as you thought it should okay. do. Okay. Noted. Uh, end of turn. Oh, <coughs> Elgin. Yes? Uh, you are up. All right, I'm gonna step forward, and uh, this guy that's in my way, we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna go ham. Let's see, if we can Let's see. Oh, that is not hitting. Tell uh, you what, I'm gonna do my. Oh, mm -hmm. wait a minute. Oh, I forget. I'm glad you said something. Not for yeah, us. It may not matter, but. Here, let's let, let, let's see. We don't know yet. We don't know yet. Let's, let's roll that D four. So that would make it what a thirteen. I would make it a fourteen because you have Raya. Or fourteen. Wow. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait. Yeah, and stab that make it a fifteen. Yes, yeah, stabs. It's fifteen. So that does would, that hit him? That would hit. Okay, so he's taking twelve. Uh, from me. You come up to the side of this thing and you just pump this mace right into this thing's ribs. Uh, you, your mace sinks halfway into it. You crush his ribs and whatever was beyond as the damage is too much for it to bear. This thing succumbs to its wounds and hits the ground. Okay. And, uh, you know what? I'm going to keep moving. Like, I'm like, as, as soon as I, as soon as I pop him, I'm literally going to keep pushing. Uh, once uh, you move into this room, uh, you <laughs> see a cupboard now ripped to shreds in the front and uh, a girl crying and cowering inside. Uh, soon as I catch wind of the of, of the child, I immediately, uh, I'm immediately gonna uh, unleash my next attack. Uh, let's see. So yeah, and 25. That is gonna hit. Uh, oh, and well, I mean, I'd add the extra D4, but shit i don't think it'll matter i'm gonna hit uh, it for nine okay as you come around the corner you just mace it already you slam into this one as well for nine damage oh, if you're not typing come on now there we go <laughs> uh, and it seems like its gaze is now off this child and staring at you elgin oh god good good and then, uh, actually, when uh, when you do smash it, it turns to you and just, it, it starts, ber it, it sounds like berating you, but it's hard to tell, as it says, From life to death to life again, now feast, yes, we must feast on that flesh, feast with me, feast! And it looks like it's going to attack you, but it can't get it's not its turn. Oh, real quick, too, also, I want to throw this in here just, uh, just, uh, for a... Uh, let's see. Yeah, here we're gonna throw that in there too. <laughs> As a, oh, I forgot about my bonus action. I'm gonna a, throw in that vow of enmity on him. <laughs> okay, you've made your target. He says this guy's your target now. You'll get advantage if you swing at him some more. All right. Uh, that'll bring us to Rhea, which uh, I'm gonna say crossing y'all be difficult terrain. So she's gonna you know, five, ten, fifteen. 25 as she moves into the room uh, with this ghast and uh, is going to do some chopping. She readies her long sword and swings down twice. Uh, which both of her strikes, she's actually going to miss as each swing, you can just hear the wind on this blade as it swishes down right past this ghast as it jumps to the side and just ducks over or under the next swing. Um, this, this one's quite a bit more elusive, it seems. I mean, that's going to end Rhea's turn. That's all she can do. Uh, that will take us to round three, which starts with Doya. 
So we're just going to spring back into action, having heard that scream as well. Uh, we'll go 5, 10, 15. You said these guys are difficult uh, you can, terrain? Yeah, you can move diagonally, though. You don't have to move just up, down, left, right. Okay. Uh, so we'll reset that then. Mm -hmm. 5, 10, 15. There you go. And mm -hmm. that is a crowded room. Now it'd be difficult terrain moving through things, unless you went down left. I don't know if I can even get in that room. So I'm going to stop here. And you can't you can in your turn on some someone. Oh, that's a dead creature, isn't it? Dead creature. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. But I still got to move it to step back. Because this is such a tight area, I don't think I can get in there. I'm going to try to produce flame at it. Okay, I'd say, um, yeah, you can probably make some fire from where you are. Sure, so you're trying to burn that room. Um, does it need to make a save, or is that just an attack? It is... Why did it pop out? Uh, so... The creature... I make a ranged spell attack, so my ranged spell attack is a 21. Okay, I got you. I, so it looks like you could make it in a spot, or you could lob it as a weapon. So you lob this flame at this creature, and it will hit, absolutely, as this fire just erupts on him and deals 10 damage. Uh, it looks quite burned, but it's still alive. Then I will end my turn there. All right. That's going to bring us to Stab, who is going to, uh, 10, 20, 30. Okay, he's going to go ahead and just use his cunning action to get through all this, as he just, he just tries to pass all you saying, uh, excuse, sorry, Doya, and we got, and Muscles, let me just get around you, and, and Ray just, <laughs> just walking through, and gets in this corner, uh, using his cunning action, and his movement, as he makes it in to do some stabbing. Uh, but unfortunately, he will miss one of his swings. Um, but you know what? I'm pretty sure he is a lucky guy, right? I'd say he's a little lucky. So I've never even used luck before on anything, so let me see here. That just allows him to reroll a d20, essentially, right? Yeah, I believe so. Ooh, I think that's... he has to take what it will... Or, or... I don't know what the rule is as far as like whether or not he has to take the roll after it's the, uh, but I know he does get to re-roll. I think he does, but no matter what, it should be better, right? Yeah. It is better. Um, and it is, let's see, plus one for Rhea, plus one for Elgin. Is Stab blessed right now, Doya? No, I didn't have enough for him. Okay, well, that is hate him. very him unfortunate because he is just shy of stabbing this thing. As he gets in his position, and goes to slash him with this rapier. Uh, the gas just almost getting his whole front face just slashed through, just barely dodges out of the way of him. Uh, Stab will try to follow up with his short sword and actually connect with it, though. Whoops. There we go. And do... Oh! Well, look at that. It didn't matter. As he slashes... <laughs> this ghoul right across the stomach a little bit of his gut spewing out with how deep he cut and the ghoul rides and tries to gurgle out some more nonsense at you all but seems to can't get the words out as it chokes on its own bile and stops moving and that oh god is going to take <laughs> us out of combat Uh, the girl quietly sobs in the this little cupboard, holding her knees and just looking down. I'm gonna bend down and uh, hold out a hand to her. Uh, while you're holding out a hand, she slowly looks up, and uh, she looks quite young. This girl might be like nine years old, as a uh, she just lunges out and just grasps onto your leg and just holds on. Hmm. 
Where are your parents, child? She starts crying up just a little bit harder, but just very briefly and just shakes her head while still looking down with her eyes shut. Then it's as I feared. Well, it looks like we have another one following us to Kyle. Well, more the merrier. I suppose. And, uh, I'm going to ask her when was the last time, like, when, child, when was the last time you ate? She shakes her head again. Hmm. I'm going to hand over uh, one of my rations uh, to her and take this child. She briefly come with us. Let's go of your leg to just grab the ration, but doesn't even start eating it. She's still just kind of holding on to you. Well, just keep it with you. We're we're gonna take you to safety. Well, we think <laughs> it's better. <laughs> but it's better than here. Well, and I I'll say that as I. Like, uh, <laughs> I kind of pick some of the muck from these things off my, off my boots. This place is not good. It is very not good. Well, it seems like we're becoming quite the protectors here in this hellhole. I didn't realize we came to hell we'd have so many people following us. Well, we just need to get them to High Hall. We cannot rightfully complete our mission whilst also babysitting a bunch of people. While we do need to get them to safety. Oh, well, yes. Safety, but uh, may need to think about what happens if we get to High Hall and it's not what we think it is. That is something that has been on my mind. But we can't worry about it just yet. We gotta at least maintain well, some measure of hope. We will quite literally cross that bridge when we get to it. <laughs> Actually, yes, we... Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would uh, also want to make sure to, uh, while we're, you know, I guess gathering our ourselves. Uh, is everyone else whole? Doya, Stab, Hayes, Rhea, everyone good. I am all right. Yeah, I actually didn't get cut or bit this time, so I'm 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 like as good as I was. I'm okay. Don't worry about me, muscles. Uh, I'm good out here. <laughs> and I'm going to turn and look at Rhea. Uh, Rhea, you... Are you okay? You, you charged in and... Very unlike yourself. Are you okay? She... It looks like she's trying to hide uh, her ribs a bit. As you can see, it's stained red a good bit. As she says, I'm I'm fine. It's... Someone sounded like they were in trouble. I had to go as quick as I could. That's fair. And what about that? And I'll just... I'll kind of gaze down at where she's holding her side. It's nothing. I'll be fine. That doesn't look fine. When people say that, it's really not fine. That's just been in my experience. What happened? <laughs> You've used enough of your magics already. I, I don't know how much more you possess, but you shouldn't waste it on me. Oh, don't get her. Don't start with the woe is me... No, we are here as a team, and we shall act as a team. What can we do? 
I'm going to sit down on the edge of the bed and pull her towards me and begin inspecting this wound. Uh, as you as... do, she slightly resists, but just looks away and says, it's, it's really nothing. And it looks like her, it's like the, her in inside of her armor a little bit. You could see it stained deep red right on the side of her stomach. It looked like nothing. Wild, I've been around this world quite a while. This is not nothing. He's I'm going to tell. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and do a second level cure wounds. Okay. And once you do, you can visibly see that wound sealing up. Uh, there still looks like a, a huge cut there, but it's not just open now. As she uh, looks at you and just nods and says, Thank you, but I don't know what lies ahead. Let's let's all try to avoid more things like this, yes? Not Agreed. not saving a life. My, I mean, wounds like this. Right. Just from now on, maybe not charge in by yourself with reckless abandon. She looks down at the, the child for a moment and, and just stays quiet for about the next five seconds and then says... I will do it again if I have to. I... I understand. I understand. But... We gain nothing if you run in and get yourself killed. Right. We need to approach these things with a sense of tact. Leave the foolhardy to me. He's dumb enough for all of us. <laughs> Wait a minute. You saw that paper you signed. In blood. <sighs> I'll take that. <laughs> I love you like a brother, but <laughs> that was silly. Well, yes. No offense, Gargoth. Elgin, you hear uh, Gargoth's voice only in your head as it says, The druid wastes, wastes his magic on this child. Magics that could have gone to you preserve you. Berate him. Tell him not to do it again. I see uh, Elgin, like, just looking up at nothing. Uh, should we... Uh, <laughs> I don't suppose with all the screaming and everything here, we should... Dilly-dally. No, we shouldn't, and... Ray is... Ray is right. We should preserve our magic. What little we have. And then I just walk what? off. I look to Doya. Preserve it for what? That's what it's for. Speaking of which, you don't look so good either. <laughs> I'm like... I'm like cut and bruised and bloody, but also covered in a thin layer of ice. I don't know what you're talking about. I feel fine. Wait, wait, wait. No, I, I got this one. I got this one. Let me do it. And he just, Stab kind of pushes you to the side a bit and says, <laughs> best buddy, best buddy, here. Look, look at this. And he reaches into his pack and takes out a <laughs> large red vial and says, here you go, here you go, drink this, okay? It's punch flavored. You like it. You, you didn't make this, did you? Oh, no, I bought it. I paid a, I paid ah. a lot of money for that. Like more money than than you uh, more money than you think. Are you sure? I'm not gonna let my buddy bleed like that. Yeah, um, go ahead. All right, and I'll pop the cork on it and down it. Okay, you are going to heal. I can type. Oh my god. Here we go. And it turns out I can't type because I don't want to slash toll. I want to slash roll. You heal for 14. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I actually heal back to full uh, as my... <laughs> I don't have a lot of health. <laughs> uh, 
um, as my my bruises and cuts kind of close up, and uh, I'll take the empty vial and hand it back to him. Uh, thank you. Uh, best friends, right? And I hold up the bracelet, the silver dragon bracelet. Yeah, best buddies, drinking Kool Aid together. <laughs> I'll just chuckle. Do you want this? I hand the empty vial. I don't know. Do I? I don't know. I'll we take it, and uh, <laughs> I'll I will take the vial. All right, you can add one glass of vial. Bag of holding. <laughs> now the stab looks at and says, "Yeah, do do some with that. Make make more. Like make refill it. But don't tell me how you do it. I don't even care how you do it." <laughs> and I'll walk outside and join Elgin, uh, and I'll just come up and put a hand on, <laughs> kind of like just. On his back, just below his neck, in between his shoulders, I'll say, "Everything okay? That it was going fine, and then it was weird, and then it was fine again, and then you made it weird again. You okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good, good. The uh, it just, with the benefit of hindsight, uh, I thought maybe." Maybe we should, you know, hold on to what we've got. We don't know what's on the other side of that bridge or what's even on it. And just worried. I want to make sure we all make it back okay. Indeed, but Rhea's one of us now. And she has more than proven her worth. Well, of course, of course. I love Rhea. She's like a, uh, like a little sister that, uh, I never asked for. <laughs> uh, yeah. But she, and she proves herself every chance she gets, but it's just, I don't know. I feel like maybe, maybe she was on to something. Who knows? Uh. Plus, you know, we still have all these people to worry about. We have to worry about... Oh, we have, you know... We have a romper room full of children to take care of, and mouths to feed, and people to save, and... Just... Can I do, like, an insight check on him to see <laughs> if he's... If I can pick up on any, like... Like, if he's kind of dancing around the question? All right, go ahead. Also, Elgin, you hear... Fodder for a worst case scenario. The more with us, the better. <laughs> okay, uh, Elgin, I'll let you determine the results of that roll. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Elgin just is very worried about whether or not any of us are gonna make it back. Uh, he's he he feels like we're we've we're doing really good now and we're 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 making great strides but he feels like the other shoe is gonna drop any minute i'll just kind of narrow my eyes a bit (laughs) right well we'll try to be a bit more cautious going forward i'll uh walk off and i'll come up and give stab a fist bump that's what's up as, as you're yeah, walking yeah. to stab to give a fist bump, you actually see him trying to swat Lulu, who keeps evading around him. <laughs> <laughs> he just turns to you and says, how do you make this stupid elephant go away? <laughs> and Lulu's just, just flying around going, you can't hit me, but you can try. Try again. You may get me. <laughs> Lulu, um, you, you may actually want to be careful. He, he might actually <laughs> impale you. Oh, then Lulu will go and hang out with the other. And just flies over towards Rhea and just flutters oh, in front God. of her. Maybe that's worse. All Don't right. We're, well, we're... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, I was say I was just gonna say I start to walk on. Doya, what were you? Were you about to say something? Yeah. Before Rhea made it out, I wanted to tell her something. Okay, sure. Then we we can uh, backtrack a little bit. Say she's still in there. Uh, I just wanna. Make sure she's looking at me and go, you can't save them if you're dead. 
Uh, she looks at you yeah. very sorry, uh, solemnly and just responds immediately. And I will never live with myself if I don't try. You, you will never be able to save them all. And you can't save any if you're dead. She kind of just looks away from you for a moment. And then says, I already know that. I know that. And just starts hastily walking out of the building. Once she's gone and I'm alone, I'll just say to myself, <laughs> you never can save them all. And then hop up slowly and wander out. And when you get outside, you see a whole whole slew of things happening. There's a child that's standing right next to Elgin. Lulu seems to be fluttering around Rhea, but not, not all around him, just kind of fluttering in front of her. Uh, Stab and Hay seem to be continuing their trek to the north now. Is everybody heading out? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I've, I'm kind of just uh, making sure that the little girl is okay, and she's you know, making sure she's eating her food and whatnot, and carrying on. Okay. Uh, she seems to be not holding on to you, but just lightly munching on the food, not even eating it quickly. Like she's Almost like she's forcing herself to eat. But I'm going to take us back to our big map here. As you guys continue your trek to the north to find this bridge. But that is where we're going to call it for the evening. Oof. Oof. Yes. Oh, it's, it's getting fun, entertaining, <laughs> and very tragic. It seems. <laughs> you guys were really... Juicy. Really close to uh, on that last encounter, walking into a room with a slaughtered child on the ground. Ugh. And one more round. Not in this house. Not in this <laughs> house. But you, you did. You did. Fortunately, when that thing rolled its attack, that was when, that was that was it. But it actually rolled low enough to where it just stabbed into the cupboard. Oh wow. So fate. Oh, like, had yeah, it was. It was. It was, it was. It was about to go down for real. For real. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But yeah, you guys, look at you guys. You're in Avernus and you're already helping and saving multiple people. I don't think you guys have run across anyone who has just gotten slaughtered in front of you yet. You incinerated an imp in the middle of a deal. You got ambushed by a ton of ghouls, dealt with them wholeheartedly, and protected that woman and her two kids. Have a family of halflings with you. And just barely, barely by a stroke of fate, saved a little girl who tried to hide in the house from the three ghasts chasing her down. Good work. Hey, look. Avernus is about to fuck around and find out. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's all. I'm only going to get, get more. If we can't find our way out, we'll just raise an army of child soldiers. Jesus. There you go. Yeah, I've, I've got, I'm keeping tabs on that. <laughs> you guys have six children, two oh, halflings, wow. and a human now. That's a whole party. Yeah, y'all got a party. Uh, we got it. We're starting a raid. Y'all could start a little village. You just get a couple more, Nobody, okay, and start assigning jobs. Nobody can complete quests right now. <laughs> the group is too big. Oh, man. All right, well, um, unless anyone got any announcements on their end of life here before I give some closing statements to talk about anything whatsoever? No, no, no. Um, uh, I think we should be good for Thursday, I think. Okay. Oh yeah, let me know, man. I'm, I'm, you let me know. That's rhyme of the frost maiden time. That's part of my closing statements, which I'm gonna now deliver. Thank you, everybody, for watching our game tonight. This has been Baldur's Gate: Descent into Avernus, brought to you by Cloak and Stagger. I'm gonna start shilling myself now because I forget every time, but I wrote down to remember it this time. We stream <laughs> on Twitch every Monday night at 8 p.m. Central, every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Central, and starting yeah. this Wednesday every Wednesday night at 8.30 p.m. Central with a brand new squad. Um, they're probably watching right now. Hey, y'all. Thanks for watching, too, y'all. And be ready for Wednesday, damn it, and be on time. Uh, look forward to it. It's going to be a few one-shots and then a big boy campaign. Uh, they will be starting off with uh, the Wolves of Welton, which uh, it's one of the earlier one-shots. It's actually quite popular, so be sure to check it out if you want to see how they handle it. Most of them are brand new D&D players, so... Yeah, you always know how that goes. You, actually, no, take it back. You never know how that goes. It could go a million ways, but I guess we'll find out Wednesday, huh? But, um, yeah, that that's pretty much it. 
Uh, be here for Rhyme of the Frostmaiden on Thursday. Be here for Wolves of Welton on Wednesday. And keep watching our Avernus stuff on Mondays. Subscribe, like, follow, retreat, Instagram, Cloak and Stagger. <laughs> That's all I got. Everyone out there, thanks for watching again. And y'all have a good evening. Take it easy. Bye. <laughs> Bye. See ya.